Hello there, welcome back. Now, you can use AI to write your CV, respond to messages and plan your day, but it's thought it can also warn us about potential medical issues and even predict how long we live for. Yeah, so tech journalist Laura Lunting has written a book called Hacking Humanity, uh, which outlines some incredible breakthroughs, and she joins okay. us now. We've got the book here, Lara. You've always been so passionate about tech, haven't you? I have, absolutely. I've been so lucky that for the best part of two decades, I've travelled the world covering the greatest innovation on Earth, and if there's one thing I can say from that, it's that technology and innovation is a really human story. It's all about how it affects us. And, and we can live better lives by using it and using it in the right way. Absolutely. I think what's critical here is it's not about living for longer, feeling like you're 80. But right now, we have a problem. In England, women are spending 25% of their lives in poor health. Right. For men, that's 20%. So what we want to be able to do is close this gap on health span and lifespan. Mm. And AI and technology can be the drivers to do this. The book isn't a technical guide to it all. It's a really human story about what this means for us. We hear lots about prevention. Mm. We hear lots about trying to turn sick care from health care to health care. But what does that actually mean? How does it affect us? And what can we do to help ourselves? Mm. So what about uh, AI using, us using AI to help detect medical issues that maybe we didn't realise we'd be susceptible to or we were dealing with? Yeah, there are so many ways to do it. And I think central to it is the idea of being able to bring together lots of data in ways that we couldn't before. So between genetic information, lifestyle information, our behaviours, how much we sleep, there are so many details that we can bring into the data on disease and understand risk. And if we can understand risk, we can screen earlier, we can predict, we can ultimately prevent. And even when people do get diseases, because we're still going to get sick, treatment can become more personalised. It's so interesting because whenever we have the doctors on, they always talk to us about if you've got some kind of problem, keep a diary, keep a, keep a note of things, take pictures. And if this helps us do that... Exactly. ..on a regular basis, it's, it's going to be even better. Well, that's exactly it. Now we can really quantify it, rather than just taking our own notes. And whilst these wearables that many of us are wearing are not medical devices. Some of them have medical grade parts in them. Mm. They're not for diagnosis, but those patterns are so important. And actually, the long-term patterns are really far more valuable than how many steps you did yesterday. For example, some research Although right now... Although your husband might argue about that. He, he would argue about that. He's obsessed with his steps, by the way. <laughs> are you? Are either of you obsessed? I am a little bit, okay. yeah. I, am I a little don't bit. do steps. Right. I do yoga. But I'm, I'm interested. Let's talk about some of the tech you're wearing, because I'm yeah. interested. Annie's been wearing an aura ring for a while, and I went to try and get one the other day. Couldn't get one fit. And one of the reasons I want to do it is because I want to track my steps and I want to track my sleep better. Yeah. Because I'm really interested to understand how that's affecting me. Well, and it works both ways as well. Whilst having poor sleep can encourage people to get disease, there is also an ability to start to recognise very early signs. For example, 20 to 30 years before dementia diagnosis, this is really early research right now, but changes in sleep pattern could be identified potentially longer term through wearables. So the power of this data is absolutely incredible. And if you keep tracking everything, then you understand your patterns, you get your baseline. And long term, that's where we can pull things together from. And I know we've brought in all sorts of yeah. devices yeah, here as well. A bit. So this one is a VO2 max test. Now, are you familiar with what a VO2 max test is? I am. I've we... done a few in the past. They're horrible, aren't They're they? They're brutal. <laughs> and they... But I, it's I, a, I always... a crash mat. So, <laughs> so just explain what a VO2 max test is to any of our viewers that maybe aren't aware. Yeah, so you either do cycling or running and push yourself to your physical limit. So it takes a measure of what your limit is. With an oxygen tube in your oh, mouth. Oh, yes, and... and your nose held. It's generally very, very unpleasant. Those pictures might be familiar to people of sort of the covered-up face. Yep. It's really uncomfortable. But the other thing that's really important here is... For many people who want to be able to measure their VO2 max, they may have health issues that stop it from being safe to do that yes. test. Now, so what is it? The amount of oxygen that you've got? It, it's about how, the, how everything is flowing within your right. body, and right it's now it is right. the best measure of life expectancy that science has. Got it. And this device can be stuck on you. You lie on a yoga mat. Your yoga mat could be suitable <laughs> for this. I'm no in. extreme exercise, just down on your yoga mat. And within two minutes, it can give you a reading. The gold standard is still that exercise bike or running machine, but this comes within around 9% of that. And actually, when I did the experiment, it came within 1%. Really? Yeah. 
So, for, for example, my dad, who has a heart condition, wouldn't be able to do a VO2 max traditionally, but could use that. Exactly. And that is the power of this technology. So it, it's taking various different elements of data and the algorithms are syncing them up to the VO2 max readings that it understands from other people with similar readings. So there are loads of ways we're seeing this happen and we can really understand things in a way that humans couldn't. So, for example, a system that looks at blood flow under the skin on the face can quantify depression. It can see the early onset of depression wow. in ways that... And this has been trialled in the NHS recently in perinatal women who are a high-risk group for depression. So in ways that humans can't see this, and also humans are very bad at noticing small changes, mm -hmm. whereas the AI can detect them and it can log those patterns. And it means that that data over a long period of time can be collected and we can really see when things are improving or getting worse. And things like virtual reality as well. I thought it was really interesting, that story about that little guy who was at Great Ormond Street and should he have an operation or not? And then they were able to kind of look at how his skull would be. Yeah, so Archie had a condition that was going to cause his head to grow in the wrong direction. Yeah. It wasn't life-threatening, but his parents were faced with a really tough decision when he was six months old mm. as to whether he went ahead with the surgery to have a spring inserted in the skull to make it go in the right direction, or they didn't do anything, and he was left with potential physical and psychological issues that could ensue. So, throughout the process of the appointments and the surgery, and I was there by their side for all of it, they were shown in virtual reality some visualisations of what his head would look like if they did or didn't do the surgery. Okay. So, this is a still from it. In real life, we were walking around the room, able to really see it in 3D. And it was personalised for him for exactly what would happen to him if he did or didn't have the surgery. So, they were educated to make a better decision. Mm. And those images were created using AI from previous surgeries on other babies who had had the same condition and had the same thing done. So, that data was drawn in to be able to create those images that were seen on here. Mm. And this is something that is becoming mm. even more commonplace in other sorts of surgery to understand exactly what's being done to you so that you can make decisions beforehand and even, in some cases, for surgeons to be able to practise the day before on the actual person they're operating on. Because they can do it virtually? Virtually. Yeah. Goodness me. Is there ever a concern, though, Lara, that we can be over-reliant on some of this tech? And are we, is it ever going to remove the need for human interaction and human expertise? It's a really important question. And the doctors, the medics here are absolutely critical. Mm -hmm. This is about augmenting doctors. It's about leaving the humans to give us the more human experience. So the AI can take away some of the admin. It can help a doctor write the notes so they can focus directly on the patient. But it can also serve as an extra set of eyes that can see a tumour on a scan that may have been missed by a doctor but the doctors will still be looking at those scans. Mm. Humans are still critical to this. We need to understand the data that we're handing over mm. and to what ends, because it's incredibly powerful, but we need the right data. We need to feel comfortable with it. People need to understand the benefits to feel like they're willing to give the, the parts to it that we need to make it work. So, all in all, it's, go it's going to make the NHS better, essentially. It's going to run more efficiently. Exactly. It should absolutely be able to drive efficiency. Look, there are huge challenges here. Yeah. And there's something which is always referred to as pilotitis within the NHS, that loads of, uh, loads of really successful pilots happen, but they don't result in rollouts because there's only so much capacity to do things. Mm. But the power is here in the technology and ultimately it will save enormous amounts of money as well as lives. This is a direction of travel. It's not going to all happen overnight, but there's huge possibility for us to understand more about ourselves mm. and for healthcare systems to protect us better. Brilliant. Thank Laura, you for thanks. visiting our This Morning YouTube channel. We upload new content every day, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out and we'll see you in the morning.